this particular series of expert sessions uh, is a vision of our institute primarily because we wanted to contribute to the field of research as an institution. Uh, this is the 14th session uh, in this series and uh, we are very, very happy that eminent scholars from all across the nation as well as beyond our borders have agreed to come and interact with uh, our fraternity uh, all across the nation. So I'm, I'm so happy today that we are fortunate uh, we have Professor Dilip Barat sir with us, uh, who is a very known name in the field of English and in the field of uh, ICT. I would like to uh, share with the gathering that Professor Dilip Barad was one of those early practitioners in the field of uh, liberal arts and humanities who envisioned that without the effective use of technology and without effective use of ICT, education would be difficult in coming times. Along with a handful of people, uh, uh, they initiated uh, so many projects, uh, so many uh, kind of you know research consultancies, and and they contributed to the larger fraternity uh, in in India. Uh, Professor Dilip Bharat sir is, is the uh, Dean of Faculty of Arts with uh, Maharaja Krishna Kumar Singh Ji Bhavnagar University and he also renders his services as the Professor and Head of the Department of English there. Uh, he has contributed immensely to the field of research himself, not only in terms of research studies, but also in terms of various national and international level research projects that he has successfully accomplished which I believe is a great contribution to the field of academics, especially considering our discipline of arts, humanities and liberal arts. So I'm so fortunate uh, that I'm given this uh, responsibility on behalf of my institute uh, to welcome him. And so it's an honor, uh, as I said, that it has been a long wait, uh, exactly one year uh, that we have been waiting for your session. And today uh, you could uh, make it possible to spend uh, time. We know how busy you are um, and the immense number of commitments that you have, not only at university level, but also at, uh, at the state and national level, uh, you know, um, decision making policies. So I'm very happy that you could uh, make it possible. Uh, and I would like to extend a very, very warm welcome to you uh, on behalf of my institute and my team, all my students. And I would also like to welcome all the participants today. Uh, uh, I, I can see people from various parts of India who have joined us today mainly. And I'm so happy uh, that all of us will be benefited with the insightful knowledge uh, of uh, uh, Professor Dilip Barak, sir. So thank you, sir, once again. My words uh, cannot express uh, my emotions and sentimentality on your agreement to be with us today. Uh, but I, I would wholeheartedly like to welcome you and would like to thank you and express my gratitude for being with us. So the stage is all yours, sir. And uh, now uh, I would like to invite you to start the session officially, sir. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Mithul Trivedi, for organizing such a very interesting series of lectures where eminent speakers uh, throughout India and even from outside are coming uh, and having a very interesting interaction with students, research scholars, and the teaching uh, fraternity. Well, the topic on which uh, I'm supposed to uh, talk today uh, is uh, for ICT uh, and then research and humanities, uh, research in humanities and ICT. Uh, uh, I have prepared a few slides also. So with the help of uh, some of the slides, I would like to share my uh, views uh, here. Uh, so our topic today is ICT for research in uh, humanities. Uh, and in this topic, uh, we'll first talk a little bit about this ICT. And uh, as we know that uh, research is all about problematizing things. Research is all about problematizing things. Uh, research is all about raising questions. And without uh, problematizing the things, uh, it is nearly impossible to question anything. 
So we will start questioning with the very first word that is ICT, ICT here, and we will move on to uh, uh, research dynamics and also humanities there. So uh, ICT or digital technologies, uh, we know that we have we are using ICT as a synonymous with digital technologies, but we also have to now ponder upon that is there any difference between ICT, which is which which we call it as information and communication technology. And then there is digital technologies, which is beyond uh, uh, or we can say something more than ICT. ICT becomes a part or ICT comes under the umbrella of digital technologies. So how do we question uh, uh, this? So can we start now talking that uh, digital technologies in research in humanities, digital technologies in humanities, digital technologies in teaching yeah, in humanities? Uh, have we reached at this time that now we need to what uh, think about the nomenclature also or not? Uh, and then from using ICT tools to research literature, because by and large humanities, we are going to talk about rather than social sciences, pure sciences, or engineering or other things. Yeah. Uh, from using ICT tools to research to researching literature generated by digital technologies. That is what uh, uh, we want to explore uh, in our discussion today and from using ICT tools to researching digital technologies which are significant to human culture and thus uh, humanities uh, as such. So that is uh, the direction in which we want to also uh, uh, see that which kind of digital technologies are very significant which goes beyond ICT uh, also. Well first point ICT versus or and or or digital technologies. Yeah? For researchers in humanities, it is time to grow from ICT to digital technologies, and we need to we need to see uh, the difference, the, the capabilities that ICT provides and digital technologies uh, provide to us as students, as teachers, and as research scholars. Uh, very briefly, if I have to sum up this idea, I can say that ICT supports students to be effective users of technology. Whereas digital technologies build on and extend ICT, moving students from technology consumers to creators. So uh, uh, digital technologies give us more opportunities to explore technology in our research arena. And, and the why we need to move towards digital technologies, because digital technology is uh, acquiring capacities capabilities uh, like uh, they, they have started thinking like human beings they have started creating works of arts literature like human beings and we will see some of the examples of uh, these also in today's discussion because digital technologies artificial intelligence is getting smarter than humans uh, natural intelligence and i have deliberately used apostrophe as for both humans as well as for digital technology. So we are almost seeing parallel. Digital technology is not just machine. Uh, it is at par with humans in, in its capacities of intelligence. We may put a word artificial for that, but we never know when this artificial and this natural and the difference between both will drop down. And because digital technology's ability to process natural language is getting closer to that of humans, and sometimes we find that it is getting better than humans. Uh, and we have seen that uh, uh, as a part of ELT, uh, English language teaching, if you teach language to humans and you teach language to machine, you will find that machines will reproduce uh, the language in a much better way than the human beings. Uh, and and uh, once a, a particular language is feed in to the machine, uh, they will uh, recurrently keep on uh, uh, reproducing the language almost without any error the precision the precision and the accuracy that you will find uh, uh, in machine as a language learner that rarely you will find among human beings uh, among human beings so uh, these are some of the things where we need to move from ict to digital technologies in our research arenas well it does not mean that we are not supposed to use ict either word or ict also for research in humanities we will require however our use of ict in research will be limited to technicalities 
rather than something significant. It will be limited to some sorts of technicalities rather than something very significant. Uh, using ICT is like taking monotonous clerical work from a Nobel laureate. When we have digital technologies with us, if we just play with ICT, it is something like you have a Nobel laureate with you, but you are just taking the cleric, uh, clerical work from a Nobel laureate where you can do great many things uh, 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 from him. If we consider using digital technology in a wider way, we have better possibilities to research in humanities also. So uh, we will see where ICT and where digital technologies in our research uh, arena. Uh, now, see, many, many of you perhaps would think whenever you like uh, uh, think of ICT in research, you will find that, well, how to use Microsoft Office, uh, Word, uh, Zotero, uh, Mandalay, uh, and, and citation machines for the better citations and other kinds of things. Uh, well, we can still use all those things, but I don't want to go only into this. You will just Google ICT for research. You will find all those answers. That is technicalities of using ICT for research. So uh, I, I, rather than wasting our time into what is already available on Internet resources, I would like to add something to that, that how we can move from ICT to digital technologies for research in humanities. We can raise new questions and we'll try, we can try to explore more possibilities in the field of humanities. So if we see a flow chart of research, then uh, we may find that uh, uh, I think Jadav Komal has started sharing in between. So uh, Komal, if you can stop sharing, then people can see my uh, uh, presentation. Yeah. Or let me share again uh, uh, the, the presentation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah, okay, coming to uh, this. Okay, so uh, if you see the flow chart, huh? flow chart of uh, uh, using research in uh, for uh, research in humanities, we find that first it is defining research problem. From there, we move to the review of theories required for uh, humanities. Then we move to the previous uh, uh, researches, the review of literature, and those things. Uh, and we know that we require technology for that. We'll come to that point. What kind of ICT and digital technologies we require at this level. From there, we move on to research problem, formulate hypothesis, hypothetical questions. Then we move on to identifying texts. If we are doing purely on literature, then we need to identify texts, literary text, data collection. If it is ELT, then we think of data collection. And from there, we move to data analysis and processing where if it is humanities, then interpretations and inferences are very important for, for us. And then we, we come down to our findings, our results and our outcome huh, that we try to see. So, so if this is our flow chart huh, of research in humanities, uh, where we, we can use technology, that is ICT, and where we can use digital technology and what form of that we can utilize. Let us see that in our next slide. Yeah. So uh, a review of literature, when we, we come to that point, obviously we require a kind of an, a technology and that technology we call it as research database, digital database of research, online journals, the catalogs of journals uh, in Flipnet, which gives us PhD uh, uh, thesis. Uh, Google Scholar gives us articles, uh, Scopus, Web of Science, cataloging of journals, UGC Care List, another catalog of journals, JSTOR. Uh, uh, so and, and many more innumerable there are okay? uh, 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 which can help us in doing a review of literature. So what kind of ICT we use here? We use online database, uh, online journal catalog that we use that and we can call it that. Well, this is the ICT in our research, uh, very necessary for all kinds of research. Collection of texts when it comes, then virtual libraries are required. We, Gutenberg uh, will give you a free uh, free literary text. Google Books will help you. Online bookstores uh, and book selling websites also. Kindle or many other such platforms will help you in procuring books. So we can say this is ICT, uh, information and communication technology, helping us in doing our, our uh, literature review and also in collection of texts. Uh, 
uh, instead of text, if you are working in in uh, ELT, then collection of data, and you will find Survey Monkey and Survey and Data Collection. All those tools are available, and uh, I think all of us are well aware about all those tools which are used for data collections and other kinds of things. There, okay? that is what we call ICT. Yeah? ICT for uh, 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 literature review and collection of texts uh, uh, at the purchasing of the text also it is very helpful uh, if we compare this with the with the with the bygone age then we know that we we have to travel a lot we have to travel from library to library a physical movement of human being was necessary instead of that ict came and it reduced our physical movement now books are moving now journals are moving but we are static we are not moving so that is a, a, wonderful advancement that we see that we can save our time our money our energy uh, we can reduce our travel time and 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 we can do a lots of work there so benefits of ict yeah, are still there in all forms of researches yeah. even in humanities it is it is very useful yeah. so we we when we move towards the digital technologies we are not minimizing the use of ict it is still there yeah, very very useful there but we are doing that so now to talk about ICT in research in humanities will not be, I think, very meaningful or significant uh, uh, also. When we come to digital technology, DT for research in humanities, what we see is that uh, when we want to do close reading of literary text, then how search engines or art database, art database uh, are very useful to us. And we will see some of the examples to prove the point that how in this case we are moving towards digital technology to to find some answers uh, uh, of uh, reading literary texts yes, reading literary texts where it is not easy to find and then we get some high end of technology helping us and that is not only ict uh, digital technology so that close reading of literary texts we require this we'll see the examples uh, dt for data analysis and process now this is very very important point which we want to see and we'll see one or two case studies also and uh, 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 most of the students of ELT also will be aware about corpus linguistics but corpus linguistics people were, were looking towards language study also but now we have entered into a time where people are even studying literary texts uh, through corpus linguistics so corpus linguistics for language study uh, again something that we are doing for last eight ten years now so that is not the point that I want to make or repeat again here. But what we want to see here is that how this corpus linguistics can be useful for the analysis of literary texts also. So data analysis and processing uh, uh, through corpus linguistics uh, 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 and, and few other examples we will see, which with which we enter into the arena of digital humanities uh, uh, also here. Uh, so first example of that corpus linguistic is this uh, click C L I C and the full form of C L I C uh, is corpus linguistics in context. Uh, Birmingham University uh, Research Center from Birmingham uh, University has developed this corpus corpus linguistics in context click. Uh, it's a web app uh, 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 and developed as a part of uh, Deacon's project. So all the works of Charles Dickens are, are, are uh, you will find it in this project. So if you are a Dickens scholar or want to do exploration in Dickens, uh, Charles Dickens's work, then you get ready-made things here. But well, uh, uh, Charles, if you don't want to do in Charles Dickens, but somebody else, but you can take this as a base uh, and then also you can work, which demonstrates through corpus stylistics, how computer assisted methods can be used to study literary text and lead to new insights into how readers perceive fictional characters. So uh, thematic study also is very interestingly done huh, in this uh, work. Uh, it, it used uh, uh, this idea about quick KWIC, huh, quick that is key word in context. Uh, 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 and this, this word was coined by Hans Peter Loon. And for the concordance uh, by this uh, linguistic corpus, uh, they used quick and concordance to work on uh, this text uh, here. Uh, corpus linguistics is an area of linguistic that has become possible with the arrival of computers. Corpus linguistics use electronic copies of text as well as linguistic data that is born digital, like you can say blogs, Twitter uh, data, etc. 
to study a language. Corpus linguistics is a good example to show how research methods develop and enable new perspectives and insights. This is the same in other disciplines. Consider, for instance, how the invention of the microscope has had an impact on biology. As corpus linguistics uh, is part of our uh, rapidly developing digital world, it occasionally gets mentioned in the in the press and people talk a lot about this. But this is a very interesting analogy that we see here that what microscope did to the study of biology, how it changed huh, the way of looking at the entire discipline of biology, almost in a similar way, corpus linguistics huh, is going to make a huge change huh, in, in uh, our, our, our perceiving of uh, the literary analysis also. Let me share an example uh, example of this work. Uh, 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 this research center has also published uh, an activity book, uh, an activity book and uh, which uh, tells us that what kind of work is possible uh, through uh, this, uh, this work. Uh, in work and click corpus method and click the talk about now that is also very important as we said that we need to understand the language of technology also uh, when we try to explore the difference between ICT and and digital technology uh, one very important thing that we see here is that that in digital technologies we also need to understand what happens in the backstage of technology Whereas ICT was looking at the front stage, the, the performance of the technology on the front stage, but digital technology enables us or it, 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 it uh, perhaps uh, uh, makes it compulsory for us to understand the coding part uh, or what goes behind the, uh, the curtains when the technology is performing on the screen. So that is a very important difference. That is why this part one also is very important for students, teachers, or research scholars to see that what are core methods uh, to do uh, research. So corpus linguistic basics for the study of literature yes? uh, and the click corpora, uh, uh, this concordancing con and quick grouping uh, and how they have collected uh, this uh, Dickens is all the works of Charles Dickens, uh, uh, a very selected 29 literary texts from 19th century Jane Austen also they have collected and they have made clusters of this these works and then uh, some kind of uh, coding is given for example uh, this is uh, this is their official uh, website uh, on on this panel you find concordance subset uh, clusters keywords counts uh, uh, texts and uh, uh, if you click on the text you will find here that which work you want to work on uh, bleak house uh, Barnaby Rudge, David Copperfield, Dombey and Sons, Great Expectations, Hard Times, yes, uh, uh, Oliver Twist, Tale of Two Cities. You can select uh, any of the text uh, and whether you want sentences, quotes, uh, short suppressions, embedded quotes, uh, what do you want to do? And putting the, uh, the concordance uh, subset into that, you will find an interesting result. Now it is, it is very what is important here it is free of cost. Anybody can try this. Even if if you are very new to corpus linguistics and literary analysis, just pass some time on this website. Just pass some time on this website. The URL, the URL of this site is. Let me put it in the in in the chat here, which you can bookmark or obviously there is no need to bookmark anything because Google uh, Google search can easily take you to this if you just know the keywords then also you can go uh, so uh, sharing the link is an old method but still as we belong to the old school of sharing the thing so we keep on sharing uh, the links otherwise nowadays people you just give keywords uh, you just give keywords to the students they will reach to uh, uh, the, uh, the place where uh, you can find uh, the things there so uh, that is uh, that, that is uh, this this site from where uh, you can work and you can find and uh, then there is this part two is very interesting uh, uh, thematic uh, activities so in this part you find that how the kind of fictional characters can be analyzed 
body language and characterization can be studied through this corpus setting an atmosphere in the novels uh, exploring themes uh, so thematic study was something very curious but this uh, this corpus is helping us in doing such a kind of uh, analysis of literature where you can see the character study structure of the novel thematic study uh, see number 13 fireplace pose so there are many people standing near fire fireplace in the novel but what kind of pose they have what is the body language or let us say what is the gaze what is the gaze are we looking from inside the fireplace are we looking are we facing the fireplace what are the characters doing and what does it mean the body language and study of the body language of characters in literary text now if you are watching a film based on a novel and you study body language that is a different thing but here through language you are trying to study the body language and try to see uh, uh, the things social protest in the writings of uh, uh, education women and governess uh, uh, and, and other things uh, uh, also uh, fictional and real speech in uh, in in jane austen's work also so uh, this this becomes quite interesting uh, to see that how uh, this work tries to uh, explore uh, this for example if i come down to this point point number 17 fictional and real speech in jane austen uh, in and the 19th century uh, work so in most literary fiction even where dialect or pronunciation is limited sorry imitated the speech of characters does not accurately equal the hesitancy non-fluency and, and fragmented nature of actual real speech now even the the the, the, the language students elt students also will be interested in this that hesitancy non-fluency fragmented nature of actual real speech how to read this in in work of art instead speech is used for characterization for narrative dynamic for dramatic intensity and for symbolic and thematic purposes this uh, selection will examine uh, that how it is done so it gives us a method that you can try to find these words uh, uh, what to do with this corpus they are giving the steps also that note down these questions uh, uh, in this context uh, type this keyword use this subset study the subset and you will find uh, and you compare the concordance the result that will be coming you compare the concordance and read uh, uh, interpretations are not given here it is open for the research scholar what do you interpret so when you try to search that it seems to me that it seems to me that that is the speech how many times it seems to me that is occurring in a literary text now this corpus is readily going to give us this uh, response and then uh, you can say uh, uh, you can put another word it seems to me that and i do not mean to i do not mean to now what is the meaning of this uh, or quite out of the question quite out of the question some of this speech uh, uh, phrases which are very repeatedly used very repeatedly used in a literary text uh, so how, what do we mean by this uh, 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 wh what is this what kind of politeness what kind of uh, uh, negotiations uh, are going on what kind of opinions are being made by the characters what do we st know about the character who is speaking this or the other people around uh, those things also that also can be studied in a very interesting uh, uh, way so that is one one example uh, of uh, looking at the corpus uh, corpus and trying to see that what are uh, the, the things that can be uh, seen in an interesting way from a literary text here now as we are talking about corpus here uh, one of our phd scholars uh, also has worked on corpus analysis on corpus analysis and uh, uh, his uh, his objective was to study uh, essay type answers written by ma english students ma english students in literature what kind of essay type answers they are writing so he did he, his method also was to work with corpus analysis uh, and uh, i would request him he is mr clement uh, mr clement is coming from burundi africa and doing phd here in our department so uh, i would uh, i would invite clement for a while here and uh, within 5 to 7 minutes i would request him to make his point that how uh, how he used, which corpus he used, what kind of analysis he has done, and uh, what kind of findings also he was able to get from uh, this corpus analysis. 
Yes, uh, Mr. Clement. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me all? Yes, we can. Please go on. Yeah. Okay, so let me share the... Yeah, by the time uh, Mr. Clement is sharing the screen, In my PhD, I collected student corpus, it was student corpus, and the British academic written English corpus. And in my uh, research paper, I collected longitudinal corpus, what I term a longitudinal corpus. Uh, this uh, British academic written English corpus can be found online, online uh, through a link. And uh, if you put British academic writing English corpus, uh, you can find these corpus online. And uh, these student corpus or longitudinal corpus, if, uh, if possible, uh, they can be uploaded online and uh, people can check them and uh, do their own analysis. So the method of analysis that I conducted uh, with these corpus, I use it manual analysis, anti conch uh, for so this is for concordancing, and the UAM. These are the on uh, these are internet tools, computer tools that we use uh, to analyze. A yes, corpus. Clement, uh, let me interfere. Are you sharing anything because we are seeing your full screen only, your computer screen? Uh. Are you sharing anything? If so I was, I was sharing something. Yeah, uh, please share again. Yeah, because only your full screen is visible here. You have to reshare. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, is it PPT or what are you sharing? Anything? It is a PPT. Yeah, okay. So, but PPT we are not able to see. Yeah. What about now? Uh, not yet. You have to stop sharing and then you have to start. Perhaps.
yeah now you can start sharing again Yes, are you? Mm -hmm. While sharing, you have to select the PPT. You are share. You are selecting the screen. So the PPT is here, but I don't know. I have conducted a study on corpus and linguistics. I collected written corpus, written corpus, uh, the type of corpora that I have collected. So we have uh, three types of corpus. So two of them, the first ones, I collected them for my thesis. And those third one, I collected for, for, for my research paper. So the first is student corpus and uh, British academic writing English corpus, and then longitudinal corpus, and that I, I termed it longitudinal corpus. This British academic writing English corpus can be found online. Uh, if you want to check it, you can go online and write a British academic writing English corpus and you can check it. So method of analysis of, of, of the corpus, uh, we have a manual analysis or anti for concordancing. So we have also uh, UAM corpus tool. For me, I use it manual analysis and a UAM corpus tool to analyze uh, my, my corpus. So what is, what was the, what were the objectives of analyze, analyzing uh, the, the corpus? So to investigate uh, variation in language use. Uh, for instance, in my study, in my thesis, I investigated uh, variation in, in, in language use by student in, in Gujarat student, in Gujarat universities and, and in British, uh, in, in English. It means that I, I compared uh, the, the kind of language uh, a student in Gujarat state use 
and the kind of language uh, uh, native speakers use when they are writing uh, an academic paper or an essay. So second, to evaluate the quality of academic writing by a student and uh, to explore students' longitudinal stu development of academic writing skills. So these are the objectives, some of the objectives for analyzing uh, a corpus. Uh, there are many objectives for analyzing a corpus. If it is for student, so you, you analyze the quality of their writing and it is not possible if you do not collect, collect a corpus uh, to, uh, to evaluate a student, uh, student quality of, of writing. So we have, a, have an example here. So it is a study that I, we conducted in the Department of English here uh, at MKBU. And uh, the study, the title of the study is, uh, is does online instruction in discourse conventions of literary analysis affect second language, language students' critical stance in academic writing? It was a longitudinal study. So it means that I collected a longitudinal corpus, corpus and this longitudinal corpus helped us uh, to examine a longitudinal development of a student academic writing and also to evaluate teaching methods that were employed in teaching academic writing. So it means that the results helped me to, uh, to evaluate a student quality of, of writing and also to evaluate teaching methods that are employed in teaching academic writing. If you want to evaluate uh, this method, uh, you, use, you can use corpus. If you want to uh, evaluate student quality of, of writing, you use uh, a, a corpus. It is not possible uh, for a researcher to evaluate a longitudinal development of a student without collecting uh, a number of student written text. So this collection of, of written text uh, is called corpus. So then the corpus I collected was a longitudinal corpus and the results showed that a student showed that student uh, developed their academic writing, formal writing, but they did not uh, show any sign of a development of a critical critical writing. But so uh, it, it is it was because of the method that we have employed in teaching academic writing, uh, online teaching of of a student. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Sir, you have to unmute yourself. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Sekhar Reddy, sir. Yeah, okay. Th thank you, Mr. Clement, for giving a brief overview of your work that you have done with the help of corpus analysis. And that is the language study, but we are also talking about the literary analysis that is possible uh, with the help of the same uh, thing. Uh, let me share my uh, uh, presentation again. Yeah. The another very important tool, uh, which we call again, not only ICT, but uh, as a part of digital technology uh, is ELEN. ELEN is again a, a very interesting tool for audio and video recordings. So when, when we want to analyze audio or video, uh, and if you want to have annotation of those, then this free tool uh, is very useful for research scholars. Yeah? Uh, this this free tool uh, NL can help uh, uh, Elan can help us in NL and annotating various speeches in in different uh, uh, ways. Yeah, uh, user can add an unlimited number of textual annotations to audio uh, uh, or video recordings. Annotation can be a sentence, word or gloss, a comment, translation or a description of any feature observed in the media. Annotations can be created on multiple layers called they are known as tires. 
Tires can be hierarchically interconnected and annotations can either be time aligned to the media uh, or uh, with another existing annotations uh, also. So, uh, it provides several ways to view the annotations uh, in audio and video uh, uh, files. Each view is connected to and synchronized with the media timeline. So many times, even when we are analyzing speech or if you have taken an interview of somebody and we want to use it, that interview or we are doing a speech analysis as a part of our ELT study, then ELN is again a free software, which is of great use for, for our research purposes. Uh, so from there, uh, when we move on towards uh, uh, this, that uh, research in humanities, but in teaching pedagogies, huh? along with humanities in teaching pedagogies, because uh, it has been seen that we are doing research in literature uh, a lot uh, as a literary text. And when it comes to ELT teaching language, that is what we do as a research. But we are not combining this point that is teaching literature. Uh, researches in teaching pedagogies of humanities or literature is still very rarely found. Yeah? So though there are many successful efforts to improve and modernize the teaching of literature, most concerned methods of, of critical interpretations rather than pedagogical processes. And few have any relation to the new research on learning, that is literature learning, language, not language learning, not to speak about exploring personal teaching experiences. Yeah? So in this area also, we need to have uh, this, this point of whether digital technology and ICT, how are they useful to us? Uh, when it comes to English literature specifically, uh, or as we have lots of Englishes now, uh, but there is a kind of a foreignness to the English literature. And this foreignness uh, is because of cultural anonymity, social code of conduct, which is quite different uh, than what is our environment religious uh, inconspicuousness, mythical aloofness, difference in shared collective unconscious, ge geographical remoteness. We have very popular example of daffodils. Huh? Like many people have questioned that why we teach daffodils here because daffodils don't grow here. The, the geographical remoteness with daffodils has been explored many a times in our teaching practices and also historical distance with what we call is the English literature wherein our, our syllabus is still full of literary text coming from Britain. Now, even if it is not coming from Britain and under post-colonial argument, uh, we have Commonwealth literature or, or literature coming from India also, for example. Then also even India has such a kind of a cultural diversity, such a, such a kind of, of a religious diversity, mythical aloofness that even if it is a, a literary text coming from Tamil Nadu that I am teaching in Gujarat or a literary text coming from Assam, then again, there is the same kind of a problem that I face as we face in English literature, which comes from Britain or from America or from Australia or Canada or, or any other part of the, of the world also. A couple of examples to see that what kind of challenges we face in, in terms of cultural anonymity to historical distance or geographical remoteness and how some form of uh, ICT or digital technology is helping us uh, in sorting out some of the problems there. Uh, for example, when we were dealing with this poem in our class or for example, even if I'm researching a poem uh, wherein a close reading is very much necessary. Any research close reading uh, is very important and we have to open up each and every word uh, as a part of our teaching practice or as a research part, we have to open up each and every word. When when we came to this line, like Hawthorne's smile like milk splashed down from Noon's blue picture, it was very difficult to open these words. It was it, it, uh, uh, very tough because if you are studying Nathaniel Hawthorne's uh, novel, A Scarlet Letter or any other work, then Hawthorne will direct you because it is also written with capital H. It will direct you towards the surname, the last name of somebody uh, rather than uh, Hawthorne that is uh, that is uh, a kind of a, of a shrub. Hawthorne is a shrub full of white flowers. So when 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 we went to Google search engine, uh, search picture search engine, uh, at that time we got this image of Hawthorne's. Uh, even if you get a dictionary meaning that Hawthorne is a shrub, uh, connecting Hawthorne with white that is milk is very tough. 
why is the poet connecting this green shrubs with milk but when you see this image then you realize that well uh, meadows if you are a cloud if you are going above the cloud or like a drawn camera if you are moving on then below you you can find uh, as if the milk has splashed over meadows that is the image that you can get but without this image without this this image this is an ex example of geographical aloofness our geography is different our our uh, flora and fauna are different but that is different from corner to corner from within a country also it is quite quite different so that but still even with this this idea about noon's blue picture was very tough very tough to open that what is this noon's blue picture because there were reference to nature we thought that uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this noon is afternoon uh, and afternoon is personified it seems that afternoon is personified uh, and afternoon is moving with a pitcher in the hand like a woman going with a pitcher to fetch uh, a water uh, but uh, uh, then when we googled uh, and with the help of uh, uh, technology we found that a uh, picture with flowers is name of the painting and that is done by susan noon so noon was actually last name hawthorn was not the last name but noon was actually last name now see these are some of the problems that we can sort it out when we use digital technologies in reading of literary uh, text uh, another example is about waiting for godot where the reference about a willow uh, a weeping willow leaves bush uh, burning bush those things are coming uh, in in this uh, dialogues that we are seeing here also so when we are looking for the willow and other thing we found that uh, well when we see the willow tree with leaves it seems it is weeping so it it has a very very interesting uh, celtic cultural connection uh, with that uh, and as a uh, 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 Beckett also belongs to uh, 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 this uh, movement of uh, uh, what we call it uh, as uh, Irish uh, Irish theatre movement. So for them, uh, uh, for Ireland, for the Celtic culture, this weeping willow has its own symbolism. What is very curious to know is that that there is one tree in the play waiting for God, but tree was without leaves. Now how ironically beckett is using the tree without leaves that had there been trees then it must be weeping so that weeping that that existential anxiety how it gets reflected in that symbol of weeping willow that we can see there equally tough was this point of bush if this is a bush if it is a burning bush then what and then we find that it has a religious connotation it was moses who listened god's commands through the burning bush Bush. Now, uh, those people who are not grown into Christian culture uh, or Hebrew culture uh, uh, or, or to some extent uh, even Islamic culture, and if they are not well aware about the myths of Musa or Moses, then they will not be able to know that well, this bush is, is was burning and the sound of burning bush was heard by Moses and he thought that these are the commandments of the God that are given and Beckett is using that, Beckett is using that idea. Uh, in is waiting for God also, and it will. To, to find uh, uh, something, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, am I there? I think uh, there is a very uh, uh, the network is not quite okay, so I'm getting disconnected for a while. Yeah, I was talking about this. Uh, again, very interesting use of technology in uh, in reading literature, uh, researching literature. Uh, we can see, uh, and let me share this example. This is a very interesting website uh, prepared by uh, Google. Uh, Google, uh, it is known as artsandculture.google.com. Artsandculture.google.com. Uh, uh, when we were reading a play, Dr. Foster's, uh, at that time there was a, a reference to the myth of the fall of Icarus, uh, fall of Icarus. And uh, again, all the myths are very difficult because again, they are remotely located myths. We may be aware about Indian mythology, but Greek mythology uh, is very tough and Western literature, English literature in that context, or you can say Western literature is full of Greek mythology. 
now how this this website or this technology is helping and this uh, google arts and culture huh? they have worked so well that it, it, it is a kind of a such a beautiful tool uh, a digital technology for researching literature or even uh, for for reading literature or study of literature also or if, even if i take that only as an then how this platform also is a very significant part to research upon uh, we can research on this uh, part of this technology also that how we can come across now let us explore this uh, this particular page so when i come here uh, landscape with the fall of icarus and i click on the next button uh, i see the image uh, 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 an image a painting uh, uh, this and uh, there is a, a kind of a forward written uh, about this which tries to say that what is this painting another thing now in this painting uh, how this painting represents the fall of icarus uh, and and didelus uh, that becomes very significant to see here so now we are we are focusing uh, this when i click next on this website uh, uh, see this is a full painting and when i click next when i click next uh, 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 there is a, a zoom in there is a zoom in in the painting uh, and and it is showing the that somebody has fallen uh, in in the in the water and only the legs are visible uh, now if you are aware about this you can see some of of the feathers also some of the feathers and you get connection with this the, what is this painting about greek mythology and how it tries to see that well apart from this there are some very interesting talk also of people that people are reading from ovid's metamorphosis ovid's metamorphosis from where this is taken so you, it is incorporating some kinds of videos along with this uh, this uh, this part where uh, uh, where an expert an art expert uh, a myth expert is explaining uh, that point uh, uh, also and then also it raises the question where are you uh, icarus in what place shall, shall i seek you uh, so where have you gone in in the ancient myth of icarus icarus was prominently visible but in this painting uh, the icarus has almost gone uh, is absent from this uh, uh, painting there so see the the, the smooth way of moving uh, of this this uh, uh, website uh, google arts and culture and how it is helping us uh, uh, in, in in a better study of a literary text uh, uh, also or researching a literary text uh, also this is what we say we're going beyond ict into digital technology to see that how things are being worked out uh, and we can take this as a model and and, and we can plan our own digital technology uh, 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 project and also we can work uh, along with that in making uh, similar kinds of project for, for our regional uh, literature uh, uh, also uh, uh, let me share again my slides and to move on to the other other part yeah. uh, apart from this uh, reading of literature and other things uh, uh, the new challenge that we are facing here nowadays in humanities or literature is that uh, we are going to face generative literature now. So, uh, creative literature and generative literature. Creative literature means created by human beings. We use generative literature as it is generated by machines, generated by robots. So, uh, already we have a definition of generative literature also now. Jean Pierre Balpe uh, has given this definition and how algorithms uh, are working, how digital literature. Uh, electronic literature is coming up uh, in our life and we will be in need of uh, of new theories new tools to explore generative literature uh, 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 also uh, so in digital humanities uh, it is not time to question that you you can you write a poetry on a computer or not now the question is this that can a computer write poetry or not so we are moving in this that can a, a computer write a poem or or not? Uh, I, I would like to, uh, those who are online and those who can, uh, those who can, I would like to share one link with all of you. And I, I want to see if you can take this small test of just small five questions here. Uh, and uh, I'm sharing a link in our chat. In, in, the, in the chat, I have shared a link. So for those who can do multitasking uh, while listening, uh, if you can also explore this site, then open this site and you will find on this uh, Google form uh, some simple questions, uh, simple questions like there is a piece of poem is given, a very short poem is given. And you have to identify whether that poem is written by a human or by a computer. You have to just identify 
whether that poem is written by a human or by a computer as soon as you will click the things and submit the button you will get automatic email huh? in your mailbox whatever email id you have given in that you will get a return email and you will get correct answers huh? correct answers to see that whether that poem is written by a human or by a, 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 a computer huh? there okay so uh, uh, is anybody exploring then we can wait for a while if anybody is exploring uh, the things huh? what you have to do is just to open the form uh, a small poem will be written there you just have to identify whether that poem is written by a human or by a, or by a computer yes anybody is exploring you can put in the chat if you are doing it or you can come live and also tell that well you are on that page and exploring that or otherwise we can move on yes okay i got uh, one message okay fine yeah yeah we are seeing that you are working so let us wait for 5 minutes yeah 5 minutes there are only five five so short poems are there so very quick you give uh, 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 your responses yeah okay i got already started uh, getting the responses yeah Uh, yeah fine yes uh, i got i think two responses yeah uh, uh, email ids are reading like hina patel and monica singh i got two responses already uh no need to testing technology so give random yeah uh, uh, i think uh, dr reddy shekhar also has given the response yeah, yeah. okay rajnikan chauhan also has given the response yeah yeah four five yeah okay b b r g e c v yeah k kirti ramanuj uh, also has given the response yeah. yeah fine yeah we are getting the responses okay by the time we get responses let us see what what are the outcome that we are seeing uh, here uh, in this mm, let me share okay so uh, uh, out of the few responses here and uh, i tried this earlier also uh, so we have total 40 responses uh, including the the previous 42 now so from this group also we are getting good number of responses yeah it is yeah uh, 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 nisha thomas has given sonar uh, uh, ritu lohani we have received uh, all these responses now see what we get here the first poem yeah? now uh, now see the the percentage uh, we all are human beings uh, who has given this responses and and 62% said that the first poem is written by human but it is actually written by computer it is actually written by computer the first poem but it is not the point that who is right and who is wrong the point is that we are confused the point is that that 60 and 40 percentage in this or you can say here 25 75 percentage our observation as a human being here you see in this almost equal almost 50 50 so so what we see here is that it is it is obviously increasingly becoming difficult to identify whether a poem is written by a human or a computer and that is very challenging that is uh, what is very challenging that it is increasingly becoming difficult you can see this uh, the charts where it is almost parallel uh, half of us tell this uh, other half tells the other thing uh, 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 also there so uh, generative literature the poems uh, written by uh, by, uh, by by machines uh, seems to be very much like humans and poems written by humans in modern or post modern or dadaism uh, in dadaism uh, in lots of movements uh, which came as an experimental movements in 20th century lots of those writings uh, of poetry happened in such a way that they were very obscure uh, very obscure to open uh, to understand and uh, if you put it parallel to machines then it seems like uh, uh, we would go that this poem i can't understand so it must be written by machine so we are thinking in a way like what we can't understand is done by machines it can also be done by uh, human beings uh, there so uh, that is generative literature which we are seeing now and we need to uh, explore generative literature now uh, in in a in a very significant way uh, 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 in our research also now these are digital technologies huh? these are all digital technologies uh, used uh, in generating literature yeah? 
So we have lot many websites now. Poem generator. You want free verse, haiku, uh, uh, rhyming couplet, sonnet, uh, a limerick, whatever you want. Yeah? Narrative poem, love poem, and this this uh, machine view. Uh, this this poems there. So now, how are these machines working? Uh? What kind of algorithm is is working behind uh, these machines? Uh? And uh, how do we? Uh, do analysis or research of this. That is also the area that we. So, from using a machine as a tool or ICT as a tool to do my research in humanities, now this technology itself is becoming an object. And I have to now apply my human brain into the study of technology. So, now what we are changing? I was using machine or a tool to do my research. Now I have to utilize my human capacities to do research into. Uh, how machine is behaving and this is very important uh, there are very interesting works which are done this is another one uh, a macro analysis uh, by matthew jokers uh, which also is also very interesting digital methods and literary history or even this work uh, culture nomics by uh, aiden and michelle uncharted big data uh, analysis the lens of human culture so uh, human culture literature humanities by and large and lots of very successful projects has been carried out also in this uh, uh, direction uh, uh, there so finally uh, i'm coming to uh, the end of my my talk i've already taken one full hour uh, just conclusion uh, this that uh, for us the new challenges are coming from artificial intelligence obviously we are using artificial intelligence but it will also come with a new challenge because if our artificial intelligence that is that is obviously coding it is human coding now those humans who are preparing codes of artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence is going to give us lot many things from different kind of analysis to even generate uh, generate literature for us even in all those things if if those people the software engineers who are working behind this if they are biased if they are suffering from unconscious human bias then our artificial intelligence is also going to suffer from the similar uh, uh, biases uh, the study of humanities as such obviously is to see that we become free from stereotypes and biases prejudices uh, historically we might have suffered from various kind of biases prejudices and and, and stereotypical way of reading uh, human cultures civilizations people literature now the basic purpose of humanities is to make humans free from those things but if our artificial intelligence is going into the grip of that then it becomes necessary for us for us that is the, the researchers of humanities to take care of this also uh, there are very interesting works by uh, robin hauser uh, uh, and even uh, kriti sharma and they are trying to read that how uh, our artificial intelligences are suffering from gender biases uh, different kind of gender bias and their answers which we are going to take as objective answers we think the technology is very objective but we don't know that our biases are are are, are creeping inside uh, the artificial intelligence also and so it, it is not it is not free from biases it is not objective uh, that is the concern that we are also looking uh, a very interesting point for the research in humanities uh, this is uh, this website is also very interesting moralmachine.mit.edu uh, as we know that we are moving towards uh, driverless vehicles, uh, driverless vehicles where the machine is going to drive our vehicles. Now, at that time, the very important point that comes that if it meets with an accident, then what may happen? So uh, this this MIT project uh, is working on this idea that uh, if a human being is driving a vehicle, if human being, if we are driving a vehicle and we are at a point that on one side, the there is a cyclist going on the other side old person is going on uh, at one corner children are playing and then from other side a car is coming now my brake has failed suddenly uh, in which direction will i go will i go and bang with a cyclist with an old person with the children or with the other vehicle uh, what what will be my moral choice whatever i am going to decide the the machine is going to decide so we are see what happens here is that we start reading humans in a better way from reading machines and artificial intelligence, actually we are researching into human behavior also. Lot many accident happens by human beings. What might be going in the mind of human being at that 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 moment? 
when he is uh, is he trying to save himself is driving trying to save driver trying to save himself or somebody else what is that moral choice that is made now whatever choice we are going to make we are make to make codes of that and we are we are going to give it to uh, our machines uh, which are going to make decisions based on uh, that also so uh, a wide literary projects for making humans human is yet not over the humanities people have new challenges to make robots human now to make even the driverless car human and we want to see more of digital technologies along with ict in researches in humanities and in pedagogy of teaching literature also so uh, we can we there are possibilities of going beyond uh, using ict just for the technical things about citations and other kind of a thing let us try to venture into what are the new possibilities that digital technology is giving to us or providing us in terms of researches in in humanities there okay? uh thank you dr mithul and the and the ajam patel team for uh, this uh, opportunity to have the interaction with everybody if there are any questions or other thing we can uh, we can uh, have some some more time thank you thank you so much sir uh, the house is open for any kind of questions or if you wish to add something to it or if you have any doubts to purify uh, uh, or if you have any feedback to give uh, the house is open for everyone one one of the very interesting thing that i, I we try to compare huh, this that the virtual and the physical time and again because uh, comparison is very natural uh, to everybody so had it been a uh, like physical gathering huh, then also perhaps there won't be anybody asking a question when the speakers are sitting on the podium or sitting on the stage huh, at that time but but when there is a tea break huh, or when there is a lunch break there is lots of discussion now that is what we are missing in this uh, virtual gathering <laughs> one thing importantly we are missing it is the breaks in which there was a wonderful interaction that used to happen we have a kind of an inhibition to question people when they are on the podium but uh, during breaks wonderful interaction that is what we miss here yeah yeah there is i think one question here rajnikanth chauhan has asked uh, what would be the future of poets if machine generated poems would be appreciated more well uh, 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 so uh, a very interesting challenge as a human being as a human being that is the challenge to all of us not only poets now see workers are diminishing from factories Work, workers are, are are going off from factories uh the similar way uh, uh what will be the role of creative writers and to what extent the creative writers will be important that will be very 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 curious i see that well we will start saying that this is my favorite human poet and this is my favorite machine poet that is where we will be entering so we will have a choice now okay uh, is is your favorite poet a human or a machine so uh, uh, it is not that the uh, the human poets will not be required it will be still there but say for example uh, if if i i am i am i am somewhere and i i want some poetry suddenly i will go to an atm machine and say that well i want a, a, a sonnet on on sadness <laughs> and i will press a button and and the sonnet will come out or even not atm i will just have an application in my mobile phone <laughs> and uh, i will press that well i i want a sonnet i want a limerick i want a haiku and uh, something will be generated so ready made literature will be perhaps provided uh, 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 to uh, the thing also so human poets will still be there but we will have an alternative here now how do you think sir it will affect the creativity of human beings in coming times yes uh, yes that, that is uh, like uh, we have to again question what is creativity now uh, we have seen that many many of the writers uh, uh, when they are growing in their formative years if they are reading a particular poet a lot that style will come in their writing 
their insight hmm. will come their their that that way of looking will come that philosophy will come now it means that that person who is writing creative work he is doing nothing but like a robot he is producing somebody's philosophy somebody's viewpoint and, and that is a huge problem with us uh, that by and large we are a robot of culture we are robots of religion we are already conditioned by society in such a way that where is our creativity that also is a huge question how many writers are really uh, creative in that sense are they not by and large copying unconsciously is not our unconscious subconscious made of what was already existing around us and i am just reproducing that so uh, this leads to that question that what is it to be creative what is it to be really uh, I, i give this example many a time that uh, if somebody tells us that do this and if we do without questioning are we not robots yeah. we are like the toy yeah. uh, the monkey toy yeah. we are told do it and <laughs> we do it so uh, 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 by and large true, human beings are, are, are like that and, uh, and that 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 is where the, the question comes about what is it to be human being then so sir uh, for example uh, in 1960s uh, we had wonderful latin american literature that came out uh, uh, it was the beginning of the post modernism uh, especially in the field of literature marquez for example uh, they created wonderful literary creations like 100 years of solitude for example uh, in which a, a, a fictional world of macindo was created will it be possible Uh, by the artificial to create uh, such kind of you know uh, literariness in literature which can actually repair the human you know disparities so will it be possible in coming times yeah i think uh, the answer for this can can be like uh, if you are in 1920s or 1850s had you ever imagine that such a kind of literature will come from latin america but has nobody imagined that that uh, such a kind of a thing would happen from this this region or uh, anybody from this area can give such a kind of a literature that nobody imagined yeah. so uh, even when uh, indian writers were writing uh, at that time also people had not thought that well india indian would win uh, acclaim in english literature which is not their first mm -hmm. language nobody imagined before that and it happened so at that time it, at this moment of time it is very difficult to say what are the possibilities of generative literature the same way right. it was very difficult to say eh, that what were the possibilities of, of the literature coming from this uh, uh, this new world uh, the third mm -hmm. world as we call it or the colonized world uh, the same way today also it is uh, 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 so uh, uh, i would say that something amazing might happen uh, something amazing but what will happen how will it happen we can't say that sir it definitely creates a lot of anxiety in me now that what is going to happen with the field of literature <laughs> however there are other questions as well so i i think uh, uh, yeah uh, probably they are in the chat box uh, yeah. so if you could just go to yes, it okay there is uh, uh, i think uh, yeah uh, i think sara sandhya whether the machine writing poems alone or uh, uh, or all other genres of literature Uh, right now we have the websites which are uh, uh, poems are written by this uh, machines uh, 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 i think very soon we may have uh, because there are projects uh, of uh, writing collaborative novel or collaborative play eh? so virtually people sit at different places and they contribute uh, into writing but there is an intervention of technological platform and human beings that is uh, taking a shape there Uh, if you want to see that there are there are these chatbots, there are chatbots, and some of the chatbots are like psychological chatbots. So if you are nervous and if you want to talk with somebody, you can just go to those chatbot and tell something, and chatbot will answer to you. For example, even now Alexa or Siri, Siri in Apple or Alexa or that also like people are getting bored, so they start talking with Siri. Now if you record those dialogues, it will be very near to absurd theater. absurd theaters uh, dialogues if you see they are meaningless at one level uh, meaningless so, mm -hmm. so if you say this is meaningless but you have already celebrated meaninglessness in literature so why you have a problem with the another form of meaninglessness <laughs> so that mm -hmm. you can you can have a play uh, and you can perform this play somewhere in youth festival 
in university program also yeah. no, the dialogue between siri and a human or a siri and alexa you just put siri and alexa together and just note down what kind of dialogues are happening so that these are the possibilities of other form of literature eh, being coming out from this also okay? uh ritu lohani eh? uh, how can we find if the said application or the website is authentic and error free help can be uh, received yes uh, you can always read about 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 that website and they also put that what kind of algorithm they have used so they they describe that what is the algorithm what they normally do is that they pick up one poet and they they pick up the style of that poet and they they make a code around that so if you put a, a specific word here and there then like that like that poet they will reorganize the words and they will generate the the the, the poem so they are basically are using algorithm of some human poets uh, there is also a project of writing mahabharat in the same way algorithm of mahabharat mm. is used and and so you will keep on writing and it will it will create a kind of a, a that the the stylistics of mahabharat will come in your writing uh, through through machine so these are the things which are going on huh? so that you can always see that that website is authentic or not uh, read about the algorithm that they have used there okay rajni kant is asking explain the idea of e and share a few platforms for it virtual uh, research environment uh, uh, there are many uh, i think even google can help in in exploring uh, uh, those uh, uh, research environments which are virtually being conducted mm -hmm. in different capacities even digital humanities and if you if you will see this uh, uh, electronic literature uh, uh, sorry, dh uh, uh, a dh project uh, review and uh, let, let me see quickly if i can find one or two examples very handy this was very interesting one which i have uh, recently explored and i found something a uh, very uh, very significant also uh, in this uh, uh dh digital humanities just a uh, uh, is back i sent this to some of the students also okay? uh, by the time if there are any other questions that also we will take uh, uh, reviews in dh yeah oh, this is uh, this is one uh, uh, site from where you will find uh, in in this line uh, the the point in which we are talking about uh, reviews in dh so this is again a very interesting virtual platform where you find uh, what kind of work has been done and uh, 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 this is the journal also project registry is also given there and you can explore huh, many of these uh, projects here yeah this is one interesting uh, uh, platform which if you want to see uh, in, in so far as uh, th this field is concerned yeah. in the same way uh, uh, many of this virtual environments for the digital uh, things are created by lot many people in whatever area you want to work so uh, basically we can say it is digital cataloging eh, of uh, the work of art where it can be explored okay uh, so uh, find any other questions let us see mm. Uh, uh, sir, uh, I, I think uh, uh, Sara uh, Sandhya has asked one uh, important question: Is it possible to do research on machine poems, or it will be considered as plagiarized one? No. Uh, yes, we very can. Innocent question. Very yes. innocent question, but it is important. Yeah, yeah, it is very important because uh, that is that is called generative literature. Huh? So, uh, research in generative literature or electronic literature, research 
research in electronic literature. So if you explore electronic literature, you will find people have started working uh, on this. Uh, so it's not like plagiarism, but there is now a, a completely a different branch of generative literature, like creative literature. See, now earlier we were just telling literature is literature, but we have to be specific now, creative literature or generative literature. So uh, uh, electronic literature, if you will explore, uh, 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 even the site uh, eliterature.org, uh, they are working on this uh, literature generated with the help of uh, machines uh, and uh, this electronic literature organization. So. Uh, where, where you will find the uh, area uh, and lots of work is a uh, very interesting work is also available uh, here. So uh, uh, what we, we also need to do uh, in this uh, line is uh, also to see our regional literature, the possibilities of uh, how our regional literature can also be benefited from uh, uh, all these things uh, because uh, still our, our languages uh, uh, are finding problem uh, in, in having uh, this uh, uh, conveniency with digital platform. The way English language is so convenient with this, the other languages are still facing uh, the problem. So even our uh, 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 researchers in the languages, uh, uh, regional languages, they also will have to see that what, why, why still we are not having this possibility of exploring our language and digital platform. See, otherwise what is going to happen again uh, is that that by the end of this century, there will be lots of new researches in terms of electronic literature, theories and other kinds of thing. And again, we will sit down and cry that, well, uh, my literature is like this, uh, like early it was oral and then the written and then the West got control over the written literature uh, and the orality has to struggle a lot to find its own space. Uh, the same thing is happening, going to happen again in the digital space and that also. But today we are at a level playing thing where uh, uh, our languages needs to be uh, explored more and more in this uh, term. So possibilities of translation studies, machine translations, comparative uh, studies uh, need to be explored in the same line also. So no problem uh, in doing uh, research in generative literature. Uh, uh, <laughs> Right, sir. sir one, one last question or rather a doubt that I personally have, I would like to clarify with you. Mm -hmm. Sir, do you think that these kind of digital literature, uh, you know, uh, generated uh, through the artificial intelligence uh, will be able to manufacture the emotions and the sentiments that literature so far uh, has been uh, carried, uh, you know, out? So will it be possible for it uh, to have the same amount of intensity to manufacture the human sentimentality or there will be uh, certain issues uh, related to that as well uh, I see I, I, for example let us see emotions uh, for example if you talk about emotions and sentiments now uh, 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 do emotions and sentiments require language only or it can be without that also so uh, uh, language, uh, uh, whether this language, we have started feeling something through language. So we see that language is necessary for emotions and sentiments. But that bhav vishwa is, is beyond bhasha. It doesn't require language. So uh, when we have the same connection with animals, for example, uh, we do convey emotions and sentiments with them, but we don't require any literature for that, for emotions and uh, sen uh, sentiments. Got got connected or yeah yeah I think right yeah yeah I can yes, yes, got disconnected and now yes, I got again connected yeah so language is, is is a tool it is a very external to us but we have naturalized language now we do not feel that language is uh, is again a kind of a mechanical thing so so now machines are outside of us 
like mobile is outside of us uh, language also is an outside but we have internalized it so we we feel that what language can do machine cannot do but i think the time will come where we will also internalize machines in us to, right. in such a way that, that this difference perhaps uh, is a very genuine question today but i don't think uh, it will remain a question after 100 years but people will be surprised to say that people were questioning like this <laughs> that will be <laughs> very interesting that this were the questions that people were raising that how to true, do true, that. very true so that is uh, that is where i see language is an outside of us uh, but we have naturalized it and we think it is something internal but language also is a, 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 a technology uh, which we have imbibed and new technologies also we are going to uh, internalize and naturalize then there won't be such questions thank you thank you so much sir i think it has been one of the finest sessions i have uh, attended so far uh, and uh, i i'm really really grateful to you for this wonderful interaction with the entire group i'm sure that everyone uh, must have enjoyed the feast of learning from you and uh, 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 on behalf of my institute the hm patel english studies center i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to you and clement especially uh, for being with us today and uh, i i'm very sure that people uh, today have a wonderful wonderful learning experience and we will be looking forward to have more interaction with you in coming times as well thank you so much sir it is uh, always a pleasure to be with you it is always an honor to have you with us uh, in all my events you have been a part and uh, today uh, you have made our day uh, there is so much clarity now and we have new kind of you know a uh, perspective for digital uh, technologies and how it could be used and utilized for research purposes so thank you so much sir and thank you everyone for joining us here uh, we conclude uh, the session officially thank you everyone thanks. and thank you dilip sir yeah thanks, thanks a lot thank you everybody all the all the participants also and the organizers thanks thank you sir thank you